Hey, sports spoke to Jim Buss and discussed both his profile and his part in the franchise's demise. Buss is aware that the only way out of the public relations nightmare for the Lakers is to win, and he's confident that day is coming soon. So my resume is just me all of a sudden taking over, which isn't true. It's not true at all. The thing that most people don't understand is that I've been doing this for 20 years. I worked with Jerry West. I was very much part of the final decisions on all the championships that we've won in the last 20 years. I was extremely involved on both the basketball and the financial side, but there was no point for me to go out and wave my flag. It didn't make sense to me. Now I understand that I should have to a certain degree. Stephen A., your reaction? Uh, let me say, w when I first read this early, very early this morning, I laughed and I laughed and I laughed because I said, my friend has been teed up the way he's never been teed up on this show by his man Jim Buss. Fire away. Let me say this. <clears throat> first of all, the comments that are about to be expressed are in no way reflective of ESPN. Oh, gosh. First take. Chuck Salaturo, Skip, mm -hmm. Molly, or anybody. This is just me. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I didn't even read the whole article. Mm. And the reason I couldn't read the whole article, Skip, is because I couldn't get through it. I, I read some of the quotes from this man throughout this article, speaking about un how unfair it was, leaning on Jerry West to come to save the day, speaking so glowingly about him, it made me want to throw up. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something, Jim Buss. You know, <clears throat> I am on the record because he did talk about, you know, loud TV personalities. I, I kind of think I qualify for that mm -hmm. one. I think that, I think that would be me. Uh, I believe it I, is you. I can't think of a, cri a, of a critic more conspicuous about Jim Buss than me. Let me say this to you. I'm not wavering one single bit. You are an atrocity. The worst thing the Lakers organization could have done is to have you in control. And here is why I say that under no circumstances have I questioned Jim Buss's knowledge of the game of basketball. Under no questions have I questioned his, uh, you know, his, his ability to decipher what is best and what is not. I am aware and familiar with his background with analytics because when you and I were standing on the sidelines together in Dallas before you lost that playoff series years ago, Jim Buss you told me about it then. I know all of this. Nobody is questioning Jim Buss's knowledge. Here is when I have gotten on Jim Buss. This is why I continue to be on Jim Buss. And this is why I call him an atrocity. Because regardless of the knowledge that he unquestionably has, regardless of the experience that he has unquestionably accumulated, he lets all of that go out the window when his personal feelings get involved. It gets in the way of business and productivity, which is why the Lakers have struggled. You want me to count the ways? Fine. Here we go. Phil Jackson decides that he's going to step away. We know that you were one of the people pushing him out the door, even though you put it on your daddy. God rest his wonderful soul. We all miss the great Dr. Jerry Buss. You have an opportunity, okay? When Phil is going out the door, you want to keep Brian Shaw, even though he obviously didn't have the greatest record in Denver, no. but Kobe and others wanted Brian Shaw. What is the reason Jim Buss did not pick Brian Shaw? Because he's connected to Phil. That's why. Then, all of, obviously, Mike Brown doesn't work out. You get rid of him five games into a regular season. Five games! We can't even tell if somebody's got gas in five games. Mm -hmm. But you got rid of him in five games. Who did you bring in? You go and you interview Phil Jackson. You go to his home. You tell him we're going to sit there and you got to tell Monday morning to make a decision. You backdoor him and make the decision Sunday night. And who do you bring in? Mike D'Antoni. You turn around. Not only did you bring in Mike D'Antoni, but you turn around after that. And what did you do? You had the... the to, uh, the, the goal to insult America by forcing Mitch Kupchak, who everybody knows is a reputable executive, very knowledgeable about the game of basketball, a protege of the great Jerry West. You got Mitch Kupchak literally comes out in public and says, we, got, we thought we picked the best man for the job. I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but that's around the block, that's around the area of what he said. That Mike D'Antoni, 
no championships, no championship appearances was a better choice than Phil Jackson. You got the White Howard. Oh, by the way, you had the White Howard there at the time. Certainly, he could do better. We all we all understand that. But he's a perennial All Star. He's one of the best big men in the game. He's clearly an asset to any organization that he's on. You want him in Tinseltown. You lose him. Why do you lose him? Because you get him to come to L.A. You tell him he's the future because one day. Kobe's going to step away. We want to build this franchise around you, and then you ignore what he wants in Phil Jackson, and you bring in Mike there, Tony, who you call Skip Bayless Mike and Tony mm-hmm. because you think the no D team. should be taken out of his name. Correct. All of these things, these are just the peripheral things that have happened under the stewardship of Jim Buss. We never, never mind the fact that this reporter for USA Today who did this article highlighted how it was the first time in eight years that Jim Buss was in Hawaii for the Lakers training camp. First time in eight years. Where you been? We won't count the amount of games that we've been to. Myself, J.A. Adonde, a host of other people who go to cover the Laker games, and Jim Buss is nowhere to be found. We know he's somewhere watching the game, but it ain't inside the Staples Center most of the time. So don't come. You can sit there and paint this picture and lean on the great Jerry, Jerry West all you want to, but let's be clear. Jerry West can say what Jerry West wants to say. And if Jerry West was so concerned about the Lakers and about Jim Buss, what the hell did you leave for, Jerry West? Could it be because there was a million dollars that the late Dr. Jerry Buss guaranteed to Jerry West? Uh, if you acquired Shaquille O'Neal, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. And, and for some reason, he, he reneged on that, albeit momentarily. And Jerry West's pride kicked in, and he decided to walk away from the Lakers organization. Don't get me started on the decisions that have been made by the Los Angeles Lakers organization that you could have done a far better job of. I'm going to say it again. Jim Buss knows basketball. He knows enough about the game. He has worked for the organization. He has worked hard. That has never been my issue again with him. My issue with him is that his personal animus Mm -hmm. has interfered with his basketball judgment and it has been at the expense of the Lakers organization and it has been at the expense of Laker Nation. As it pertains to to Phil Jackson. As it pertains to Phil Jackson and and the other things that I mentioned. And in the end, it has cost the Lakers organization the a lure that it once has. Prove me wrong. Go out there and get a marquee free agent. Because the last time I checked, you haven't had one in years. They haven't elected to come to Los Angeles. And we all know that if Dr. Jerry Buss was still alive, somebody, whether it's a LaMarcus Aldridge or somebody, would have came to L.A. by now. Mm-hmm. They didn't come because of Jim Buss. And then you have the nerve, the nerve to call out Magic Johnson? Magic? Really? Ooh. Go ahead. By the way, I'm I'm a little less emotional than you are about this. Go ahead. Mm. To your Mm -mm. point, his very sister Jeannie wrote in her book, Laker Girl, that she felt stabbed in the back. And and I'm assuming that's by her brother over the Phil Jackson episode, Mm -hmm. right? Is that fair to say? Yes, man. Stabbed in the back. Okay, here's my takeaway. And I'm looking at it through the eyes of of a poor Laker fan out there. Any Laker fan who took the time to to work through this entire article would have gotten sicker by the line. And after a while, you'd go from queasy to angry because in the end, this is desperate delusion. That's what it is. He is desperately delusional. He is trying to convince this reporter from USA Today and in turn the few fans who still are gullible enough to believe his baloney that he's on the right track. And I'm going to leap before I, I hit another quick Please couple do. points. I'm going to leap to the end where he says, yeah, I think we're in a dynamite position, not a good position, a dynamite position in our rebuilding program. But he goes on to say that he now needs two more years before they're an actual contender for the championship. He says in three years from now, they could be a contender and then you can judge me. Now Jeannie is saying he's got two years to do this, so they're a little not on the same page mm-hmm. here. But he concludes, I'm going all the way to the final paragraph, which you did not reach. Jim Buss predicts they will make the playoffs in the Western Conference this year. That, that's laughable to me this year. They are not going to make the playoffs in the Western Conference. I'm sorry, 
it's not it's just too loaded it's too deep they'll obviously be a little bit better depending on Kobe's health and his ability to bounce back but they're not going to make the playoffs now let's go back to Jerry the great Jerry West I, I have always been his biggest fan and you cannot tell me Jerry West didn't have a whole lot to do with what Golden State just did last year because he was an advisor he was a team builder in the background albeit but you don't think his fingerprints weren't all over that championship last year you don't think this franchise has suffered without him, but you know Jerry, right? He, he's as nice a man as you'll ever meet. And so he's going out of his way, out of respect for the late, great Dr. Buss to say about the son here. And he's saying that the son is saying that Jerry wrote me a letter a few years back saying, don't listen to your critics because they all have motives and agendas and they don't know what they're talking about. And I'm assuming you might fall into that group, right? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm assuming that, but I don't know that for a fact. So my point is, Jerry goes out of his way to say about the analytics part that Jim is really smart, but he's the easiest target out there. Well, it's because he's turned himself into the easiest target out there. He deserves to be the easiest target out there. And then we get all the way to the magic that you talked about. Magic has been critical, rightfully so, of Jim Buss. Nobody loves the purple and gold any more than Magic Johnson. Is that fair That's to right. say? That's I right. mean, you talk, You think these people bleed, the, the family oh, bleeds? Please. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. Come on. Let me this tell you something right now. The city of Los Angeles would throw a parade right now oh, if Magic, Magic Johnson became the owner you, you of the You got that right. They'd throw a parade right. right now. Okay. So he, he responds to the criticism from the great Magic Johnson. This is Jim Buss saying, it's like, really, dude? My dad made you a billionaire almost. Really? Where are you coming from? That's what he says about Magic Johnson. And Magic issued a one-line statement to USA Today, which said, it's all about winning, comma, Jim. So it's pointed right at Jim Buss. Exactly. Well, it is. Exactly. And, and winning would cure all this. Mm -hmm. But how close are they to competing for a championship? Seriously. Now, come on now. Okay, come, uh, come, on. come on now is exactly where I am. So I look at what's happened. Even this last draft, I, I told you going into the draft, I, I'm not a big D'Angelo Russell guy. Maybe he'll be, be I hope he's better than I think for Kobe. Be sake. And I, I like Julius Randle, which, who, who they got at seven, but remember, they took D'Angelo this past year at number two, and they had Okafor there. And you, you, you corrected me on this. They thought they had a grand plan where That's they right. could land a big man, right. and it didn't happen. That's it. Why didn't it happen? Exactly. That's what I want to know. Exactly. Why didn't it happen? Exactly. Because, because of because, this guy. Because of that guy. Yeah. Because, listen, listen. Okay. There have been times when the Los Angeles Lakers have worked out players. And Jeannie Buss and Jim Buss are in the same gymnasium and nowhere near one another. Agents lament this. Free agents have lamented sure. this. Players have lamented this. Potential draft picks have lamented this. These are facts. They are not to be disputed. You can try, Jim. I'll be waiting. But in the end, what it comes down to <laughs> is that you cannot dispute this. Jeannie Buss came on my show, my radio show, last November when she was in studio, in-house, and she said he knows how much time he has. And I said, excuse me, what are you trying to, are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that it's possible that you could fire your brother? She said, absolutely. Yeah, sure. So, yes, she could. Yeah. She is the one in control, but we all understand and recognize that, you know what, she loves her daddy, and this is, this is the position that her daddy yeah. wanted Want, you know, wanted his son, Jim Buss, in. I am not here to say, to use the word atrocious or to talk about the Lakers because Jim Buss doesn't know basketball. I'm not accusing him of that. What I am accusing him of and why I get on him is not because of his basketball acumen. It is because he has allowed his personal emotions to get in the way of that at the expense of the Magic Johnsons of sure. the world, Laker Nation, and the Lakers franchise. The fact that you would sacrifice the Lakers and its great tradition because of your personal feelings is as inexcusable as it gets. So he could sit here and he could talk all day. I want to thank USA to, for today for doing this fabulous, fabulous article and revealing just how nauseating this man can get. I feel sorry for the Lakers organization. Y'all ain't going anywhere <sighs> until that man is gone. Remember, all, no all USA Today did was just give him the floor. I get, and, 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 he, and I applaud them right? for it. Yeah. I applaud them for it. But you saw he took it. You see, oh, he, 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 oh, trust me, I've requested interviews with Jim, but I haven't seen him take up that offer. Mm. Yeah, we mm. know, mm. we know. Mm. I mean, you got to be kidding me. You got, I mean, really? 
Really? Please. All right, the guys dropped the mic on that one. And the Giants, they dropped the ball last night. The Eagles roll over the G-Men, so are the Cowboys the biggest winners from